Miu Miu for years was thought of simply as just the Prada almost diffusion line, but recently it's turned yet another corner, distancing themselves from their colossal sister. So, how has one woman managed to develop two distinct luxury labels loved by millions? Miu Miu was established in 1992 by none other than Mucha Prada, the eponymous head of the Prada brand, with the name Miu Miu being her family nickname. Their debut collection, Spring Summer 93, was a collection of cowgirl-themed clothes of suede, fringing, and cotton dresses. The brand was meant as an unabashed creative outlet for Mrs. Prada that was supposedly less concerned with trends or profits and more inspired personally as the woman she wants to be. That was at least in concept because Mrs. Prada and her team are heavyweights in the retail business for a reason, and for Miu Miu, they had a vision of youthful looks and a more spry tone to appeal to the youth market, who at the time Prada wasn't directly targeting. But despite being able to open their first store a year later in 1993, just before the release of the Autumn Winter 94 collection, the brand didn't see the projected explosive success right off the bat. Instead, they found themselves struggling to differentiate themselves from Prada meaning they instead focused on a softer rollout for the brand, which I suppose should have been preempted. It's hard to change an artist's handwriting to a differentiating amount, especially with a new business that has yet to develop its own house codes. Though this is a tad ironic because in this very collection, we see now obvious brand identifiers like this collar, the pleated short skirt, and repetitive use of rivets or poppers but they hadn't been secured as identifiers just yet, being that this was their first usage. So to help with this problem of separation from Prada, from 1994, the brand was moved to America for three seasons, where it showed to mid-critical success. Then once in London, autumn, winter 97, before moving back to Milan for a spell, starting in spring, summer 98. Miu Miu at this time wasn't really commented on critically in large quantities, at least that I could find. But from this Vogue interview from her Autumn Winter 97 show, we can see that because of the provenance that comes from being associated with Mrs. Prada, the company was still commercially viable in Europe and America, though not yet in Asia. Realistically, the product was good and commercial, with a full product range of garments, shoes, bags, etc., which were able to keep them profitable, they just didn't have more desirability over other luxury offerings to allow for higher margins. So, because of this profitability in their wide product range, Miu Miu managed to successfully launch a menswear line in spring summer 99 to diversify their portfolio. This, critically, was actually very well received, and so menswear began on their own catwalk in Milan Fashion Week just one season later in autumn winter 99. It was presented as a play conducted by professional actors in lieu of models, meaning that Miu Miu now had two commercially successful lines, but not necessarily a distinct look to differentiate themselves from Prada leaving many to feel like it was a luxury diffusion or subsidiary line, and it was priced as such, with prices demanding about 40 to 50% less than Prada. This was all until the Prada Group, the parent company to both Prada and Miu Miu, decided to back Miu Miu more fully. Likely because by this point, the brand has had time to incubate well and had naturally grown a loyal customer base with a few brand identifiers over the years, like these pieces, which include color detail collars, the 60s as inspiration, stripes in general, baby pinks, and mini skirts, which contribute to a more recognizably Miu Miu look that had potential to recuperate some of the money lost from the failings at Jill Sander, which was another brand owned by the Prada company that was not doing well. In my opinion, despite the low initial sales, I think this change to Miu Miu began in autumn winter 02 which is really the first collection that is still currently recognizable as Miu Miu all of these years later, with elements we've seen before now cohesively presented, like this hooded silhouette, color blocking, 60s influence, and more leggy looks. It's in my opinion that this is where Miu Miu really starts to differentiate itself from Prada, although I am aware others may feel differently, and you could very easily argue earlier collections are recognizably Miu Miu too, if you wanted. By 2005, the company set up headquarters in Milan, before in 2006, they committed Miu Miu to the Paris Fashion Week schedule, away from Prada, who was showing in Milan, to attempt to differentiate in the same way that they had tried before. However, 
This time, it was actually successful. The women's wear was growing in strength, collection by collection from here, differentiated from Prada. However, the menswear line continued to get comparisons, not only to Prada menswear, but also to Marnie, who had a very similar look to Mrs. Prada, but were more commercially successful in their menswear offering. Miu Miu menswear has an incredible cult following today. But it was before its time, so unfortunately it was closed in 2008, with their last collection being spring-summer 08, so the company could focus on its now profitable women's wear line that had just begun something very interesting. In the women's wear spring-summer 08 show, they showed their first bag with manipulated leather. Specifically, this clutch bag with gathered leather. This bag would go on to be Miu Miu's inspiration or predecessor for an absolute classic the matelassé technique, which showed alongside other leather manipulation in the spring-summer 09 collection. The matelassé has become a staple for Miu Miu and it's easily their most recognizable identifier. However, it wasn't actually successful at first. I couldn't find any reviews of the bag from that time period at all, which led me to think that it wasn't a bestseller right off the bat. This backed up by the fact that we don't actually see the bag come back again until Autumn Winter 11 over two years later. Autumn Winter 11 in itself was a clearly well designed to show off their accessories. But there's always an element of luck in a creative field, luck that very much worked in the favour of New Mew for this collection. Not for the bags though, but for the sunglasses. These sunglasses were really Miu Miu's first viral product, at least viral to this extent. They were all over the fashion magazines at the time, available in a wide range of colors, accessible in significantly more retail locations as they were stocked by Sunglass Hut, and I remember so desperately wanting them. They were so commercially successful, in fact, that they're still available to buy today around 12 to 13 years later, just of course in different colorways. Actually, it's more or less these two products, the handbags and the sunglasses, that became the cash cows of Miu Miu. It's no secret that leather goods are the make or break of a big luxury brand, with sunglasses being a close second. In this case, made by Luxottica, who in 2011 saw Miu Miu as one of their best-selling brands at 4.2% of sales, which, according to their own annual report, was worth 261 million euros, which in 2011 was 363 million US dollars, literally a third of a billion dollars in sunglasses alone. So, Miu Miu was extremely financially successful by this point, and it does continue as such, but it still hasn't hit the wider zeitgeist to where it is today. Honestly, I would argue that aside from a few one-off hit products here and there, it wasn't until spring-summer 22 that they really had a whole collection hit out of the park again. Personally, I find it so interesting to mirror the Prada and Miu Miu brands until this point. Because Mrs. Prada didn't actually start the Prada brand, it was handed down to her through her family, having been started by her grandfather, Mario Prada, and her granduncle, Martino Prada, whereas the Miu Miu brand is truly hers, a brand she began herself as her vision for who she wanted to be as a person. And though I do want to jump to Spring Summer 22 because it is a major turning point for the brand, that's not to say that they don't have great and important collections between Spring Summer 12 to Autumn Winter 21. In particular, Spring Summer 14, where we saw a development of the 60s aesthetic, this time mixed with scaled up children's wear as women's wear, the blue hues and pseudo Western style jackets becoming instant classics, the Autumn Winter 19 collection for being their first fur free collection, and perhaps the most influential collection being the Autumn Winter 21 collection. One could argue that really any and every company takes a while to find its feet. But what's interesting is that Miu Miu never really failed. It was always commercially viable, and I don't think it saw a year of losses since its inception. In fact, if it wasn't for the ridiculously big rise of Prada in the late 90s, Miu Miu would be extremely respectable as a company throughout all of the 90s, 2000s, and 2010s. Mrs. Prada's situation worked as a double-edged sword because it was obviously Mrs. Prada's fame, family money, and connections that made the Miu Miu brand in the first place, but it was the shadow of Prada that kept it very much as an insider secret for so many years. However, it is this Autumn Winter 21 collection that would really change that. 
It's not like the genius of this collection came from nowhere. Obviously, Mrs. Prada is a well-established designer. So in almost every collection, all of the house coats are present and the color palette is consistent as well as everything relating to everything preceding it. But that being said, it seems that in this collection in particular, the house would perfect the identity of Miu Miu that they had been carving for so many years. With the late 60s inspired looks, balaclava hoods and light blue tones, this collection was absolute perfection. And I think the company knew that it would be a turning point too, considering they took to the slopes to show off the pieces in this very grandiose way, making the most of a bad corona situation. The collection, though heavily praised in the fashion sphere, saw little attention outside of it, save for some of the more unorthodox looks like this one, which was certainly questioned by online critics. But I would not consider the company enough of a hit just yet to warrant the respect that we know that the brand gets now, at least not until the Spring Summer 22 collection, which was a blow away hit right from the moment it showed, and it is very obvious as to why. A staple of Mrs. Prada over both the Miu Miu and Prada brands are skirts, specifically with pleated skirts being very much a Miu Miu staple, as well as blazers or generally Italian style tailoring being very identifiable for Mrs. Prada's design style. But in this show, she subverted both of these ideas completely by chopping them in half. Mrs. Prada is really not known for deconstruction, raw hemming or unfinished looks at all. So for her to show exactly that was a statement in itself bound to get people talking. It was taken by many critics as a response to people returning back into work, having forsaken now bygone dress codes, yet being forced to redon themselves in them, have now cut them up in an act of rebellion, like we did back in school if you were also forced to wear a school uniform. The collection was clever, timely and looked great, meaning it resonated both on the aesthetic and emotional levels with viewers. Mrs. Prada and company, being extremely savvy business people, cottoned onto this very quickly and went to work with getting Miu Miu in editorials and seen on celebrities the world over. Specifically, they sent out this miniskirt to every magazine, every celebrity they could to get the Miu Miu name out there once more. So much so that it created a huge deconstructive miniskirt trend that is still very popular on TikTok today. The collection was marvelous and the marketing was strategically respectable too. I think really the only misstep in the campaign was not signing a Western actress along with Immuna as the brand ambassador. In Korea, she's known now more for her acting than her working girls generation, but I wouldn't say she was known for being particularly unique in her fashion choices at all. This actually works in the Asian market where simple, well-made garments run queen, but for the Western audience, it doesn't quite translate as well and doesn't relate as well to how the audience perceives the Miu Miu brand. This pretty much comes down to how the brand is marketed differently between the East and the West, in Asia, Miu Miu is accepted more with this aesthetic, where in the West, it's more with this kind of a look. There's clearly a little discrepancy between these looks, but most brands are marketed very differently in the East versus the West because these consumers just consume very differently. And realistically for Miu Miu, the market is much bigger in Asia, where in Seoul alone, there are 10 Miu Miu stores, which outnumber their stores in London, New York, and Paris combined. But still, Having just Yuna as a brand ambassador doesn't holistically work for both markets. That being said, interest in the brand was growing exponentially at this time. So when the Autumn Winter 22 collection showed, everyone had high hopes for another big hit product. Unfortunately, that didn't really happen for the Women's Wear show. We didn't get that one viral product to send the media into a frenzy, at least not right off the bat. But what we did get was the return of menswear. You may remember how I mentioned menswear was halted in 2008 and had grown a cult following since. Well, now that Miu Miu had seen an immense growth in its notoriety, it could not have been better timing to bring back the iconic menswear offering. The menswear of Autumn Winter 22 was significantly more androgynous than its forefather, which panders to the more receptive men of the new generation exceptionally well. The suiting is especially nice, as is the pleated shorts as a take on the well-established pleated Miu Miu skirt, and I thought it was particularly smart to have both men and women wear several of the menswear looks, giving a less gendered dictation of their offering. But the virality of this collection didn't end there. 
because more recently, as this collection has come into stores, we've seen a huge surge of interest into the ballet flats that were shown on the catwalk, but didn't hit a wider interest until they were made available in stores with various iterations. Specifically on TikTok, Miu Miu got their serious viral moment going again. And really these days, companies and brands need viral products like this to keep momentum for the brand going, enough for it to be a bankable luxury that people will want to buy into. Needless to say, all the attention from the media at the time for the menswear that then followed through into the more media attention for the ballet flats meant that this collection has become a standout from the brand as a whole. Meaning I and many others were very much excited to see some more menswear and some more great design at the Paris show that showed recently for Spring Summer 23. This collection was once again iconic, bringing back the new house codes of short skirts and shorts in the pleated style, lots of midriffs and a very androgynous look. I'm so happy to see menswear being brought back to Miu Miu, but mostly I'm just so happy that Mrs. Prada's own brand is finally seeing its roses on a much wider level. The only shame of it being that there wasn't really a viral product from the catwalk itself, but maybe it will be when it comes into stores. I guess for that, we're gonna have to wait and see. This collection, as with the two that preceded it, have begun a new era for the brand that really achieves the youth that the brand has strived to produce since 1993. I'm so excited to see where it goes from here. And if Raph does end up taking over from Mrs. Prada at the Prada mainline brand, I really hope that she stays on to design the Miu Miu line so that it can grow even further. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos like this one, or check out my two previous videos on your right for the full playlist of videos on your left.